So now in many of my videos, you'll see me use the 1N4001 rectifier diode. If I'm using a rectifier diode, it will be in this package here. Uh, that should be gray right there. But uh, the gray band is where the cathode is. The side without the band is the anode. So that side has to be more positive, that side more negative, by about 0.6 volts before we'll start conducting. And according to the data sheet, it has a maximum forward voltage of about one volt. So that's probably when you get close to one amp, which is the maximum current that it can handle. So usually a data sheet says that's a general purpose uh, diode or something similar. Now, I also use the 1N4148 quite often. Has the same uh, forward voltage, uh, different package though. So 1N4001 is uh, typically the DO41 package, black plastic there with the great band. And uh, the uh, 1N4148 tends to come in this glass package there, which uh, is like red or orange for the body. Um, that's just what the internal looks like. It's clear glass around it. And then a black band for the cathode right there, DO35 package. This package though, um, I have a lot of Zener diodes and other diodes that come in that same glass package. So you have to look at the part number on that one. This one you can usually see with the bare eye. Um, unless your vision's uh, somewhat bad. Uh, whereas this one, I don't know how many people would be able to read it. It's really small, I can't uh, read it. I have to use a loop. So um, you'd have to find, uh, actually some of mine say ST4148, and then other ones say uh, 1N4148, which I find interesting, I just noticed that. But in any case, if you look at the data sheet, it says a small signal fast switching diode. So basically it's saying it's for like lower currents, but where the uh, direction the polarity of the power supply is switching uh, rapidly, at least compared to a general purpose uh, diode. So again, it has a, uh, I, I added this down there for both of them. The data sheets for both of them just say the max forward voltage of a uh, one volt. Uh, but if you measure it, once it starts conducting current, it's gonna be about 0.6 volts. And for a long time, it would be 0.7 volts. But uh, maybe once you get to 300 milliamps of current, one volt will build up across this one. Um, not terribly important to know, um, but uh, uh, it might be for some circuits. Now, we have the forward continuous current. As I said before, that one is uh, one amp. So this one can handle a lot more current, the 1N4001, than the 1N4148, which can only handle a uh, forward continuous current of uh, 300 milliamps of current. So a lot less current there. So if you have how, higher uh, power supply needs, you would have to use that one, but the vast majority of my circuits are just like 20 milliamps or less. Either one of them works uh, just fine, no problem. Now we come to the uh, breakdown voltage. So the, uh, again, for my circuits, doesn't really matter, I stay well below 50 volts, but if you reverse bias the 1N4001, so positive on that side, negative on that side, that'd be reverse bias, that's the way you don't want it to conduct. Somewhere above uh, probably 50 volts, it will start conducting, uh, and uh, it might fry the component right there. Whereas the uh, 1N 4148, you have a breakdown voltage of 100 volts. So you can make that side more positive, that side more negative by 100 volts. Um, and uh, probably gotta go above that before it'll start conducting and maybe fry the component. Um, but in any case, higher voltage there. You do have uh, alternative options though with the N1 4000 series. There's also the 4002, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7 right there. Each uh, higher number can handle more voltage. This one can handle 1,000 volts. That one can handle 100 volts right there. And then the, the numbers in between are in between numbers. Um, so you have, you have other options right there. But uh, uh, usually most circuits, you're plenty fine with a 50 volt breakdown voltage. Now we're gonna go to where the 1N4148 really excels. Let's do the uh, 1N4001 first. So according to uh, Wikipedia, because uh, the data sheets I looked at do not say a switching speed or anything. So according to Wikipedia, you can use it in circuits that are uh, 15 kilohertz. So that means it's going uh, one way and then the other way uh, 15,000 times a second, basically. The polarity is uh, changing. Not uh, terribly fast in electronics, but like my circuits are generally far slower than that. So this diode works uh, pretty well. If we had something switching, uh, you know, any bit faster than 15 kilohertz probably, 
we'd want to use the 1N4148. The data sheets, they may have slightly different terminology here, but uh, max switching speed, they all say 4 nanoseconds. So uh, that's uh, nanosecond is billionth of a second, billionth with a B. And uh, so 1 nanosecond is 1 billionth of a second. And according to Wikipedia, that means you can use it in circuits where you have uh, your switching, your alternating polarity going at 100 megahertz right there. So 100 million times a second. So now when it comes to the uh, 1N4001, uh, and I thought maybe we'd be able to uh, read that. It's pretty easy to read in person, but with the loop there, you can see it's really easy to read. So 1N4001 right there. I have some of these on the breadboard where you can't uh, normally see it with the uh, extra components. There's also Zener diodes there, but uh, the Zener diode looks uh, different uh, than this one. So I don't have as many 1N4001s as a 1N4148. And uh, so when I need a lower number of them, and I'm, uh, especially if I'm using like Zener diodes or something, which look different, I'll use the 1N4001. This came from the uh, Radio Shack kit that uh, Make Electronics made, but they altered that kit a lot. I don't even know if they sell it anymore. But the uh, 1N4001 comes in a lot of a uh, basic electronic component uh, kits. So that's uh, another reason why I use that in a lot of videos. And now the uh, 1N4148, uh, much harder to read the part number. I probably couldn't read it, uh, maybe if the uh, light was right without a uh, loop. But there with the loop, you can see it's pretty easy to read. So for some reason, with uh, this kit, you can see we got ST right there. But then we got uh, 4148. So maybe they had to go with a different manufacturer or uh, something. But uh, it's easier to read in uh, person than on camera right here. But not too hard to read on camera right there and we will take a look at the uh, radio shacks uh make electronics kit which probably changed if they even sell it anymore but uh, 1n4148 it also has it this is the first time i plucked one though because i have 45 in the uh, joe knows electronic semiconductor kit so whenever i need a bunch of diodes i usually uh use that but this one you can see actually says 1n on it and uh, it's easier to see in person using the loop not looking at it directly, but uh, there you can see 41 and uh, 48. So again, it's easier to see in person, but even on camera, um, hopefully you can see that those numbers are right there, the uh, 1N4148. So in any case, as I said before, if I need a lot, I just use the 1N4148 from the Joe Knows Electronic Semiconductor Kit because there's up to 45 in there. That's how many it says there's supposed to be. And uh, the... Uh, one and four thousand ones oops grab the resistor um there's uh, some of them i have on the breadboard like uh, maybe three or four so if i just need like a couple i'll just grab these quick but if i need a whole bunch of diodes and i'm not using zeners or something that look like one n 4148s then i'll just grab that baggie so i can grab as many as i want and then i can just chuck them all back into the baggie when i'm done 